All right, so let's see if Arjus has been learning a bit of what Seska has been working with. Obviously, he has the Gazuma. We've seen in the past is nothing too new. He does utilize it for that coveted sparks sparks technique, and it looks like Arjus yeah. wants to ban it from the get go. We can't blame him. I am already. I mean, even though we only have a digital coach in the game, I'm already getting PTSD flashbacks or flash forwards, I guess to when we have Gazuma plus an aggressive digital temp. That plus two speed is absolutely disgusting to match up against an RG. Does not want to deal with that. On top of that, again, as, as you mentioned, plus the Sparks is already such a tough cookie to deal with. You let that through too often and suddenly you're dealing with a high octane uh, grandpa or a Momo, in fact, right? Momo with plus two special attack sounds like a nightmare to hold against. Oh yeah, I think I think plus one special attack, plus two special attack for sure. One shots almost every single thing in the current game. It is way, way too impactful. But hey, Setsuka also keeping a look up with Arjus. Arjus really likes his two rock, two rock. He plays it very well. So Arjus playing it safe, bringing in the Kinu. Setsuka keeping it straightforward. The Grumper and the Barnchi both effective into a lot of Arjus team. Grumper, the Barnchi, the Nagais, the Volarin, even the Calibus here. And same thing with the Barnchi, the Mashuk, the Calibus. So Setsuka such a strong opener against Arjus. Oh, who can forget the Grandpa too? The Grandpa, the Grumper doing really good into Grandpa. So all right. Are just trying to answer back against the Grumper, but doesn't get to answer back into the Barnchi. So this is kind of tough for Arjus, uh, even for being the blue side. I think Seska has a slight edge because Barnchi just hits so hard, but not too much. Not too much. Of course, uh, of course, Mashuk does a big amount to Grumper as well. Absolutely. So the Kinu Mashuk opening. Uh, sort of just a solid, uh, solid sort of um, holding opening, uh, especially um, for the most part. RG is uh, uh, gonna struggle, uh, especially with his Barnchi and Grandpa. Of course, the Grumper is so devastating. And on top of that, again, Momo still available. There's just so much special attack damage that just <laughs> these wind times are going to struggle to push through this. If you had a Saku, then the Saku may be all right here, but uh, when you're running wind times such as Grandpa and uh, Barnchi, you're going to struggle. Alright, so Arj is recognizing the threat that Grandpa is, so does ban it. And hey, Seska doesn't even want to deal with the Nagai since he does have the Momo and the Grumper with him. So does ban it as well. And hey, Momo and Digital Koij, uh, if you know you're just coming back to Temtem, yes, that is the first ever Digital Tem we have uh, to play with and it is that Koi's fish. So let's see how much is able to do We saw a couple digital attacks against the Mashuk. So we know you as we know digital is effective into melee. So not too bad But this is it Absolutely. semi finals time. Let's see who's moving forward, but this is just game number one I'd like to point out the digital Thames best move is exploding uh, It's self-destruct. So uh, you know shout out to that uh, not really digital tem, uh, but uh, digital tem in the spirit, I guess. So Setsuka opening with the Grumper and Barnchi again. This is probably, I mean, this is probably the most dominating opening uh, I've seen so far in the top, uh, the top eight cut. So much pressure from the Barnchi that this Mashuk has to leave. It generally has to. It doesn't. In fact, it braves the storm. Beta burst connects on the Naga spot. The Beta burst trade will in fact favor the side of the side of Setsuka and the perfect jab throws out on the Naga perhaps thinking that Gumpa could stay in but the Naga comes in the perfect jab defense down is nice but surely a man is buff is free yeah really well thought out play for Setsuka here uh, no one, Grumper had no business there, could do a little damage but hey let's get some big big boy damage with the Nagas the next turn so yeah, really well played. Eats the uh, perfect jab really well and sets up for a big turn here. So now guys, a beta burst followed by the Barnchi beta burst. Mashuk will be out of here. And there's not too much Temtems that really deal with that. Everything is gonna be neutral damage from those mental techniques. 
Uh, the only thing that could maybe set up for the next turn, something like Calibus, something like Volorant, to do some toxic techniques onto the Nagas guys could maybe be ideal. But hey, Mashuk is just going to be sacrificing himself, saying, you know what? I dare you to attack into me. I could hold up. I'm the best boxer in the world. <laughs> but nope, and not strong enough. Yeah, I don't think Rocky would beat, uh, you know, Professor X. So definitely understandable there. Mashuk sacrificed just to put some toxic ticks into the Naga, sort of forcing a no madness buff system. All right, so Naga is getting some good value. Barnchi getting some good value. But as we just stated, we needed the Volorant. We needed the Calibus. And Volorant is such a good temp temp. So a Noxious Bomb into Naga is, I think it will be enough. Definitely enough with those two Toxic Ticks considering. So we'll see. We'll see if Naga wants to stay. Another potential option. Maybe you bring back Grumper. Grumper doesn't take a whole lot of damage from either of these Thames. And then that following turn... That is a potential big, big damage going into the Volarin. Swap out does come through. Momo will be pushed forward here. Of course, Mashuk down. Not necessary to keep the Barnchi up. Psy Surge will be pushing into the Kinu Kinu, who takes very little, of course. So it's all right with that. Noxious Bomb might actually punish, but no, it goes into the Momo spot. Wow. Red that the Barnshi, or sorry, Red that the Naga would swap out mm -hmm. perhaps, and the Sacrifice comes through. So a nearly full HP Kira sacrificed, gambiting a second Temtem to make an indestructible Volarin, but there's still a Grumper in the back. I mean, Volarin isn't that safe yet. Yeah, you know, this is a feels bad moment when you overthink it. It's just, it seems almost impossible sometimes. You know the Noxious Bomb 100% kills, and you know Seska's a bright player, so you know there, you would think that he doesn't think it's staying in, but hey, he ends up getting the kill here the following turn. Calibus with the Toxic Ink getting it done. So Noxious Bomb trying to stack up that special defense before Momo gets out of hand. Let's see what he has. Undermine thrown down. The Calibus survives the onslaught of that Momo, but look at that damage. Absolutely disgusting. One click and your half your HP on a Calibus is gone. And uh, if that was really any other squishy or Tem, uh, we might not be even on the board with said Tem. Grumper swapped in and this is a nightmare. E-Storm is going to shred. Yeah, exactly. East Storm, as you said, I don't believe it. It just came in, right? Since uh, Nagai's had to, uh, you know, it just passed. So it just came in. East Storm, not online just yet, but still a Thunderstrike doing big, big damage onto either Tem. Is it enough for 45% onto the Calibus? Maybe with that minus. Oh, no, I thought it was minus special defense, but a Bark. Yeah, a Bark with the Thunderstrike. I think Calibus woof, will woof. be out of here. Noxious Bomb to punish the Grumper swap, but of course that's half damage, so insignificant impact uh, is landed. Thunderstrike though, not insignificant at all, shuts down the Calibus, and surely all eyes now towards this Volarin for that Undermine into Thunderstrike. The question is if that'll kill. Actually, in fact, the Grandpa <laughs> Undermine into Thunderstrike uh, sounds like a pretty good plan to me. Yeah, Grumper being so healthy, being so stamina healthy, it has a good time against these Thames. Despite Volarin being at plus 5 special defense, can eat quite a lot from these Thames. Uh, but Grandpa cannot, and Volarin's the one running out of stamina. So Momo, Beta Burst, or sorry, Wimbers coming in. But the Undermine, I think this is going to kill the Grandpa just this oh, turn alone. Ugh. Absolutely. Doesn't instigate him, so maybe... It's a high HP grandpa, or maybe not a special attack, special attack. Well, the Momo survives even just to put salt in the wound. The Thunderstrike shuts down the grandpa for sure. And now the Volorant stands between uh, Setsuka and the first game. Yeah, and A. Arjasasi saying the writing on the walls. It looks like Setsuka going up one game. 
adjustments will have to be done here for the side of RG. Again, gambiting two Thames right away sounded, it looked really sus to me. Didn't seem like the right call, at least for that game. So I'm hoping to see adjustments. Um, obviously, the band now swapped out from the Gazuma to the Grumper. But uh, my spider sensor is telling me we're going to see a Gazuma digital Koi opening. Yeah, you think so? I mean, Grumper did get banned, so Seska has a chance to play this Gazuma, and boy, I've been waiting all day to see it in action. We'll see, though, if Seska... I mean, Electric does seem to be doing pretty good against Arja's team, uh, but Seska is thinking about, thinking about a potential ban. He banned the 2-Rock last time, choosing to ban the Calibus this time. Okay. You know, I am i don't know about that one. And of course, Seska is a, a much better player than myself. But he has such an easy time dealing with Calibus. You know, the Thunderstrike. But maybe without Grumper, though. I guess I can see that without Grumper, maybe a harder time against it. But hey, let's see how he deals with this Turok. Maybe he has in mind something like Undermine. Something like uh, Nagai's Fury for, the, for this one. So I can see that. I think that's exactly what Seska is considering. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, plus, but isn't it? Uh, doesn't iridescence take double damage from rockfall and from oh. stone ball? So this Tukai is yeah. uh, sorry, this two rock is actually an excellent counter pick. Into exactly this right. However, I don't want to reveal too much, but it, it the typing was revealed on the quiz, and it was actually the other one. So uh, I think I think I'm not revealing anything. I believe uh, uh or just already caught wind of that too. But yeah, I don't, I, I usually, usually really, really good. But let's see, let's see. So this is going to be interesting. Gazuma picked up with the digital coage. And as we found out earlier, digital is super effective into this Mashook. So Mashook not feeling too safe. Water cannon effective into Turok as well. So this coage is feeling pretty good. However, as you said, if it is, well, we'll see. Maybe it was someone else with the digital coins playing the other, uh, the other typing. So we'll see. I don't want to spoil anything for anyone. Mm. Right now, I'm, I'm curious what RG wants to ban. Bans the Barnchi, actually, huh? Removing another mental temp from the roster. Naga is still available though. Hmm. Uh, what were the two bands for uh, RG previously? I believe Arge's uh, band. It was the Grandpa and the Gazuma. That's what Arge's band, ah. and then Seska banned Two Rock and uh, and perhaps the Volern again. Or no, no, no. He banned the Grandpa Two Rock. So I think no, no, no. I can't remember Seska's bands, but for sure, Arja's bands was Kazuma. And, uh, so let's see. All right, game number two. Seska up one game. He is at game point. Game point in order to find themselves in that finals position. But Arja's trying to say, uh, trying to say it differently. So let's see what goes down in the semifinals. Imagine if this digital Koish could transform. That'd be hilarious. It just turned into a Megabot. Like, <laughs> I am. He looks like I it. I mean, this so yeah. bright, bright strip. It feels like something, like some kind of powers are coming out of this bright strip. I would imagine like a digital Koish special technique, like some kind of like digital beam coming out of his forehead. <laughs> I can totally see beam. that. <laughs> yeah. Swap out here to the grandpa. The digital stream doing double damage, of course, against melee. Perfect jab trades here. The Koish will be punished for that noxious bomb as well. The Koish will be taking that uh, neutral damage, of course. Holds out perfectly fine. Yeah, and digital Koish taking some good damage. That noxious bomb doing a bit more. But not too bad. Grandpa comes in here to really make sure the Mashuk doesn't feel too safe. So Mashuk might be retreating. Let's take a look if there's anything around. Let's see. You know, Kinu. Kinu could possibly eat it quite well. It just doesn't have reciprocating damage for the next turn. 
but we'll see i don't know you know that could have been something that bought that uh, bit arges in the butt the previous game he let go of that mashook super super easily and then grumper ran away with it so of course grumper not here you don't necessarily need your mashook for anything in particular just a good time all around but yeah, that first game, definitely, you kind of needed that Mashook for the Grumper. Grumper uh, was that MVP of game one. So we'll see if Arges wants to retreat. I think this time, this time it's okay to let just uh, Mashook go down. But maybe, yeah, learning from the past, it does retreat and it will be the Barnchi to come out. Hypnosis thrown out. Do not forget, Koish learns that, in fact. So Turok... Put to sleep here and tornado to follow suit. Barnshi will take a bit of damage here, but not quite as much as um, you would have hoped. So yeah. just a tickle. Yeah, just a little tickle there. So yeah, you know, Koish reminds me of the Pigapec days. Like Pigapec having one too many moves. <laughs> Koish has one too, <laughs> too many good. moves himself. Yeah. I honestly think he might get nerfed in the future. But we'll see. Might as well enjoy it. Uh, enjoy those fruits there but yeah two rock yeah. does get put to rest so i believe barnchi does do double damage into this koi so koi is not feeling too comfortable maybe looking at nagai swap nagai's to get that nagai's fury online but seska momo instead of grandpa thinking that barnchi's going into the koi so let's see what goes down but wait a minute koi stayed in Oh wait a minute! Oh, I think I I think I had that game. backwards. I, my my mistake. My mistake. I think it's double damage from digital onto mental, not the other way around. <laughs> mm -hmm, absolutely. I uh, I believe digital does double damage to both melee and mental. Yeah. It has it, it, both of them. Uh, it doesn't matter if you are smart or strong. Digital will in fact hate you. Barnshi now at seven percent HP. Another digital stream should shut it down and undermine. We saw how much damage that did. To the grandpa it will not be pretty yeah the only thing in here if barnchi could outspeed uh the koish maybe he gets a big big attack on the momo but i don't know if it will i don't know uh obviously a tornado will but that's not the biggest but hks should be able to outspeed and hks going into the koish easy taking them out and well done grandpa such a ferocious beast Tornado throwing down the gauntlet as well. The Momo will get the undermine off, and that damage is disgusting. Absolutely brutal. And yeah. now Bornshi and Gramp in E Storm range, and you know what that means. Gazuma time. Gazuma time coming out. Either you go for Electric Storm. Oh, Naga's time. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Naga's time. Uh, those guys are speedy speedy temps so makes sense they're at plus two plus two essentially nerfing themselves so much so that momo will even go off before these temps so beautiful a beautiful play there uh bringing in not guys so these guys are so so slow essentially going last no matter what even with the one prowl so we'll see uh, RG might want, uh, might think, consider double sacking here. Of course, a double swap might be predicted. You know, it depends. If Seska wants to be a bit more greedy, uh, although it's not necessary, could Madness buff instead uh, to expect a double swap. But uh, really, the only double swap available here is Kimi Turok. So maybe not the case. Maybe just try and seal the deal here with both the Wind Thames. RG, uh, although killing off the Koish, definitely not trading efficiently with his HP and damage. All right, so Barnchi gets replaced by Kinu, buffing up that Grandpa, which is one of the better temps here, but buff it up now, might not be staying around for too much longer, but maybe it does, so does retreat. So, ooh, this is gonna be rough though if it's a beta burst in that direction. So, double edge, I think Mashuk goes down. I think he wanted to gun down the grandpa a bit more priority, but no, what am I talking about? Big boy moves. <laughs> Not guys with the madness buff. Yeah, reading the double swap as, uh, again, there's really two options that for RG really sacrifice the Grandpa and Barnchi and gamble uh, an all-out raw attack to pick off the Momo or uh, 
well, unfortunately, otherwise double swap, and the double swap already instantaneously punished. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, Naga is still the slowest tem, so able to get a kill on Mashuk if it chooses. Kinu, not really worried about the Kinu, could get revitalized, but Naga goes first, so I think it seems pretty straightforward to gun down the Mashuk. And now with the Naga set up the way it is, Turok not feeling too impactful. Uh, Naga's Fury should be able to do about 80 to 90% of its HP. But Momo retreats in the eyes of the Kinu, so Grandpa trying to eat that beta burst potentially. Let's see, side surge, that one prior move easily going first. Mashuk should be falling here. Absolutely, just securing the kill, just in case he was a swap out and the Mashuk was trying to live. Side surge to just do the most damage beta burst trade, not uh, going to be there. Only to drop to the 58%. Two rock comes in. But straight in, if you're going to face check a Fury, this Turok is not going to have fun. Yeah, I think this is a little Jabate and Switch. He's saying, I, I bait you. I dare you to release the Naga's Fury. Because I don't think Turok is staying in. So it could be a bait. But maybe it does stay in. Just gets a good Noxious Bomb onto the Naga's. But it looks like not Grandpa coming in to try to eat it. Let's see if Seska reads this. Aren't you coming in as well? And still pull the trigger. This is gonna be a double kill. And I like that play from Argus trying to save that back line so you get that final Kinu buff onto the two rock. But yeah, Setska having a good time here in the semifinals. Uh, and man, such a solid team. I think with the Naga still online, but we'll see Noxious Bomb still on for two rock here. It is buffed up. Naga's Fury is not here. And hey, Madness Buff is only for special defense, not for physical. So Noxious Bomb can it do 58%? Does Seska want to take the risk or does he want to swap out? Okay, he stays in. Psy Surge onto the Kinu, just solid neutral damage. Solid 53% damage. Another one of those should be a uh, kill. Noxious Bomb actually almost, speaking of which, kills off the Naga. The Wind Burst doesn't kill the Kinu. So a Beta Burst could potentially remove the Naga from combat. And in fact, it should do so here. Okay, gets that pick off. So the two rock versus the world soon to follow. But uh, one of those is a Momo. So it's going to be a struggle. Yeah, Momo, let's see how much HP. Yeah, Momo relatively healthy. I believe Undermine's still online. So we'll take a look. We'll take a look. I think Momo, but hey, Turok didn't even didn't even take a damage from any water temp and the sacrifice. So literally Turok versus the remaining Aseska team. Ken? Can Arge's favorite Temtem or you know MVP Temtem in this Turok get the job done? Let's take a look. Spark time, I would say, for the side of uh, Setska with that uh, with that Gazuma speed down just in case the two rock uh, goes beforehand. Stone Ball does a lot of efficient damage on the Gazuma. Two more of those should kill. Yeah, for sure, doing that 48%. But Momo coming out here to try to save the day for Setska. But this is kind of close, and man, yeah, save the day indeed, despite the Turok being decently buffed up. Uh, does he read it? Okay, no, just trying to do some damage on Gazuma, so one more attack I think will be enough. But if he gets one more spark, oh, a spark onto Momo, which I thought it was coming, I, I, yeah. plus two special attack, Momo, 70. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, Kino's actually saved the Turok. That's actually impressive to see there. Rockfall going to get the kill on the Gazuma for sure, but that's impressive by far. Overexertion will kill it. But my god, surviving a Momo hit with plus two special attack is impressive for sure, but Seska will be taking the victory. Oh, and we're perfectly finding it in game number three, one to one.
going down in some epic fashion so literally picking it up at the beginning so we're gonna get to see the full game number three. Oh boy Magia opening with the Quetz of Volarin. It's like Ukama Volarin, except uh, somehow now Ukama can do fire damage, I will yeah, say. Yeah, so much coverage, right? And and you get a three prior move. Hot take, maybe Quetzalena should be one prior, and then with the synergy, normal prior, maybe, since it's so strong. You know, Stoneball is one prior. <laughs> Just Ooh, a little hot actually, take. Actually, yeah, uh, plus... Yeah, uh, one of the things actually me and Rorzy were talking about was adding arenas to the map. Like maybe arenas that give you like minor bonuses to certain types. That would be cool with like a pick and ban phase for maps. That would be sick to eventually see. And to some time maybe they'll think about that. Uh, there is still a long way to go. But for now, you know, we will have our classic stadium. Yeah, so let's see. Both Quetzaleno users on both sides, but as you said, Blue, one of these learns Water Cannon and it has a toxic synergy, so Raiken not feeling all that safe. However, Volfi does some good neutral damage onto Koj. About three plagues usually are enough. So we'll take a look. Obviously, if Raiken wants to stay in, could get some good physical damage on the Volin as well, but I don't think Raiken wants to stay in. The biggest question though. Who's going to be replacing it? You don't want to eat a Leno with the Valash. I think it's either going to be the Barnchi or the Move Flank. We're seeing it right here. The Barnchi is what Funky How decided. Valash, Volor, and a classic dynamic duo here. Valash takes a instant beating though, and Feather Gatling to follow. I'm not sure what the Volash is going to do here for Magia since that Wolfie is still on the field. Yeah, and that uh, was a really we'll good read though. Knowing that the uh, Raiken wanted to swap out, uh, most likely Barnchi. So Magia bringing in the Volash to really pressure out the Barnchi. So much so that the Barnchi feeling like he has to swap out. But at the same time, you Crystal Spark the Barnchi. Does Vortex Volfi is really gonna put a hurt in on you, so I don't think it's worth it. I think Barnchi relatively safe. I don't even think Funky How has to make a swap here because Volfi pressures that Valash so much. We just saw how much a plague did. Imagine an effective, harder hitting technique like does Vortex. There's no way Valash is living that. Oh, and something to note, really uh, well brought up in chat there. Valash did have snares, so those handcuffs, not going to be trapping the Valash as we're used to seeing from the plague. HKS thrown down, though, onto this wolf. He wants to kill it off ASAP, but that's not enough damage at all. Major Ooh. Slash, maybe a Valash. I get this kill, and in fact, it is. Look at what? that technology. We have the technology, wow. ladies and gentlemen. It is a full attack Valash that Gia is running, or maybe just a really hard hitting Major Slash. Yeah, no, it's different. This is different. Valash is a physical Valash. You know, it actually has the same amount of special attack as it does physical attack. So Absolutely. depending on what you want to build it with, obviously most people would like to go with the special attacker because of that Crystal Spike 3 prio, uh, 3 prio move. But yeah, everyone sleeps on that physical. We saw it in the past, but man, the Valash outspeeding it and not even letting the Volfi go. So well played for Senor Platt. Uh, I believe we didn't see it all tournament. So saving the spiciness for the most important game of his of, uh, of this tournament so far in the semifinals. Well, well done. Could still all be a bluff, right? It could be just that the Major Slash does so much damage. I guess so. It is It is like 130 or so or something like 150, something ridiculous. But yeah, I wonder now what's the crystal technique. Is there a crystal bite on this Valash? Because that would for sure solidify a physical Valash. But maybe, yeah. I mean, by the type of damage it did, I feel like it definitely has some attack investment. But now we're Raiken on the board. A Quetzaleno definitely brings that Valash down. So let's take a look what Machia can consider. Boulder swapped in here. Instead of the Valash, Valash getting that kill, more than happy to do so. 
And the beta burst will follow the Volarin. Ooh. Quetzaletto kill as well. A pickoff trade. Yeah, and such a good read. Uh, Funky how being the five hit he is. Uh, knowing Velash had no business in that turn, elects to go into the Volra, and that's a prideful buff. Raikin starting to get carried away. Plus one, plus one, plus one attack, special attack, and speed. Uh, nice and early, still healthy. And yeah, still there for the Velash. Uh, could do some good physical onto Golder too. But other than that, not so effective into these other two Temptemps or Magia. Raikin, a bit of pressure from the Koish Water Cannon here. On top of the... Uh, I'm actually not sure what Golder is uh, going to be doing here aside from Bamboozle. Of course, Barch is out of stamina, so that's going to be reliable. Yeah, I mean, Golder is there to be annoying, just to be a tank, just toxic ink, most likely the Raikin spot. Barnchi, I believe, was the neutrality type since it has that hand fan there. So definitely don't want to waste it into that slot. But we'll see, you know, Water Cannon with the Toxic Synergy, that's on line two. And nothing really wants to eat it. Valash can't eat it that well. Mooflank can't eat it that well. So I think I suspect that going into it. But let's take a look. Valash coming in here, as well as the Mooflank for... Ooh, Golder as well for the side of Mechie, though. Golder... Uh-oh, no way oh, did Magia read this. Oh, I was about to say. So Magia thought the Valash was coming into that slot. So he did. He did indeed read the Raikin swap. And these are some high-level plays going on here. They're not playing what's on the board. They're playing what's the next play after that, right? So this is some high-intense plays. Because obviously, you know, the standard play is one thing. But these guys are playing for the turn... Uh, almost after that, right? So Raikin swapping out what's coming in is what they're playing with. Insane stuff. Usually most tamers, you know, like a water cannon to that slot looks kind of free. But no, Machia want to get the bigger, bigger value with that Leno play. But hey, good stuff. Funky How choosing to go with Valash on that slot. Because, you know, it was a bit obvious Valash into Raikin. So Machia was like, Funky How is not going to go that obvious. Let's go for the next slot. Incredibly smart uh, plays here to avoid certain doom. The crystal spikes connect as well as the goring. The Koish immediately punished, but the Quetzaletto will smack that Valash wow. into the game as Valash is instantly dead. Mo Flank will also take a flaming stone ball to the chest, and Ember secures that kill in the following turn. Yeah, that might be the nail in the coffin Senor Platt was looking for. Funky How playing it super well. But Machia getting a couple of those reads over Funky How. He does have Raikin in the back, but Rotor being relatively healthy. Perhaps not for too long with Barnchi being here. But you do have the Golder. You do have the Velash to try to deal with this Barnchi. Or rather the Velash to deal with the Barnchi. So we'll see. Oh, Cage, so Rotor being the biggest problem for it. Wait a minute, the Camel Mew, of course, on the Rotor. Koish locked in. Might be interesting to see what occurs here. Tornado gonna kill it. Hang on. This Valash is gonna heal to full. This Koish is gonna get picked off, gonna heal it to full. The Mole Flank can do as much damage as it wants onto this Valash, but it's gonna burn to death anyways. Of course, it used Cage, but yeah, Velash is full HP into the final uh, couple of turns here. Into a yeah. uh, plus one plus one Riken, though, so a bit scary, though, still. Yeah, definitely scary, because you bring in Rotor, Barnchi uh, checks you, you know, mental into neutral typing, and then Riken into the Velash. Maybe Funky House still brings this back super close game, but this is a prideful Riken we're talking about here, so could be very impactful. I guess the Stone Ball guaranteed to connect. Barnchi cannot, or most likely won't be able to one-shot the Rotor. Uh, but I think we saw how much a Quetzaleno did onto a Funky House Valash. I think it's going to be something very similar to Raikin, but a Crystal Spike, of course, going first. 
Barnji brought down about 70%. And huge. What's this the might... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just one shot to the last. Yeah. Out of the game. Wow. And that is GG. Wait, the, the Barnsley overexert, I think it was perfect enough. But yeah. Wait, 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 wait. I might be overstepping oh, toes. The Golders in the oh, back. No. The Golders yeah, in the back. Yeah, they still the Golder. The Golder can still bring this. I mean, the Barnsley doing that beta burst damage is ridiculous. But mm -hmm. the Riken now... Now in Toxic Ink, get kill zone, and I think I don't think Quetzaleto should one shot the Golder. It's gonna be Barnshi neutrality versus Golder, which actually favors the Barnshi. So Funky yeah, might have actually taken this. Yeah, I'm I'm not too sure. Barnshi has to pick its poison. You want to kill the rotor, but you have to overexert to do so. So the more ideal play is to rest. Let's see. I'm oh okay, Quetzaleto with the oh okay. I think. Oh, he didn't get the kill. That's gonna cost the right No, Riken. he doesn't die. Absolutely, it will. Overexertion still happens on the Barnchi. He wanted Barnchi to live and hoping that the Rolder would die to that. And it will. So it is a Golder versus Barnchi situation. Wow. But the Toxic King does so <laughs> much damage. And Funky tried to fight it with the final 5 at play. But Matchia had way too much resource.